Hello, I'm Edward Court and welcome to the 12th video tutorial on using Woodwind Instrument Designer software de for designing woodwind musical instruments. This video we're going to talk about whole position groups, uh, a constraint unique to Native American flute design. We'll talk about what they are and why you would use them and run through some scenarios for using them. So that said, let's bring up the program. And I'm going to bring up <coughs> an instrument that we're getting pretty familiar with. Go into the sample directory that came with the program and instruments and that three-quarter inch bore six-hole starter. We'll open that. Six holes, three-quarter inch bore. Um, but let's change it right off the bat because I tend to like um, a little bigger bore flute. So let's change this to a seven-eighths inch bore. Okay, so now <clears throat> our starter is, is a bigger bore flute. Let's open a tuning, and I've used this tuning before. It's not part of the samples, um, but it's easy to make from those samples. It's an A, A4 equal temperament tuning, but just with the minor notes selected as a weighting of one, all the rest with weighting of zero. So let's open that and you can see it has the fingerings for all the chromatic notes but many of the notes have a weight of zero. We're not going to use that in this optimization. And let's bring up the uh, the optimizer strategy we've used before, whole size and position. Let's open a constraint set for that and take a look at it. We'll do a one and a quarter inch maximum hole spacing. And we've seen this before. It's going to vary the bore length, um, the positioning for all the holes with a, a minimum spacing between all the holes of 0.8 inches, a maximum spacing for those holes for each hand um, at one and a quarter inches with a space between the holes um, that are played with different hands uh, going up to uh, two and three quarter inches. And the hole diameters are an eighth of an inch except for the top hole um, to, a, to a half an inch. Um, fairly standard. And let's run an optimization. Well, before we do that, let's check the tuning of, of that flute. And because we changed the bore uh, diameter, uh, tuning's pretty dismal. So let's do the optimization. We can see down at, in the console view, the final error is essentially zero. So we will expect that tuning to be essentially perfect. And it is. Now let's look at, at the two flutes that we made. First let's look at the starter flute. And we can see, as I believe most of my, my starter um, examples, the top holes are evenly spaced and the bottom holes are evenly spaced. The spacing in between um, for, for the top set of holes is different than the bottom set. This is what we would call a hole group, where we have the same spacing for a set of holes. And this is a, a separate hole group because it has a different spacing, but all the holes within that group are the same. Now let's look at that flute that we just generated. And you can see that that's 
almost true. The whole spacing is a little different here to here. And probably can't see it. It's a little different here to here. We can look at the instrument itself and see that the spacing between hole 1 and 2 is 1.14 inches, but it's only, it's less than an inch between hole 3 and 2. So there is an aesthetic in the Native American flute community that says that the bottom three holes um, to make it a pretty flute should be spaced equally and the holes for the top three holes should be spaced um, evenly. Furthermore, if they're, they're too, too far out, uh, players will have a hard time negotiating uh, where those holes are and reliably coming back to them. Um, this kind of deviation, uh, I don't think anybody would have a problem. But now let's look at the support that WI Designer has for making them um, equally spaced. So again, recall this is a, a perfectly uh, tuned flute. In fact, let's name it. And we'll say, oh, no grouping. Okay. Now let's take, we'll, we'll start with that same one. There are two um, optimizer strategies um, in the Native American flute study that support group hole spacing, hole position spacing. Um, one is th this one that I'm hovering over, grouped hole position and size. So it's the counterpart to the hole size and position with, with group, group spacing. And the other one is for uh, a single taper. We'll just be playing with this one today the, with, without any, any bore changes. So let's change our optimizer. And let's open a constraint. Let's see what the differences are. I just have one sample in, this, uh, in our sample set for that, but it's the one we want to use. So I'm going to open that. And now we can see the difference between a grouped hole position um, constraint set. It's defined groups. It's defined a top group that has holes 6, 5, and 4, and a bottom group that has hole 3, 2, and 1. And they will have between all the holes in that group, they'll have the same spacing. Between the adjacent holes in that group, they'll have the same spacing. And it's still set to 1.25 inches. Um, between the two groups, I've, I've let it be 3. It could be that 2.75 we had in the last one. It wouldn't make any difference. And the same hole size constraints. Um, let's run that same optimizer, no, that same, this optimizer on the same starter flute. It runs. Again, you can see the final error is zero. And we can confirm that by checking the tuning. And the deviations are all zero. Uh, and if we look at the flute, we can see the spacing. The bottom two spacings are exactly the same, 1.033, and the top um, two spacings are exactly the same, 0.869. And if we look at that flute, we would say, OK, that looks pretty good. Well, it looks fair. Um, there's another aesthetic that, especially for smaller flutes, is there's an attempt to follow, which says hole sizes shouldn't vary by a whole lot. Um, I have a functional um, aesthetic that says I like this hole um, fairly large, so it's easy to half hole. You can see that this hole is pretty big. Um, so let's, just for fun, and it really isn't part of a group hole spacing uh, tutorial, but it's something that you're likely to do all the time. Let's 
um, let the optimizer uh, give us something a little bit better. Uh, let's say our design constraint is that you don't have this divergent uh, hole size. Well, there is nothing, uh, there is no strategy that deals with regulating the hole sizes relative to each other, but within the constraint, uh, we can certainly vary them. Um, if we go back to the flute itself that we just generated, uh, we can see that hole 3 is 0.41 inches and hole 4 is 0.384 inches. So let's just make sure that hole 3 doesn't get any bigger than, well, let's make it smaller than this, let's make a 0.35. And that's easy to do. So we go to the, the diameter uh, constraint for hole 3 and it's set to go all the way up to 0.5. Well, let's just make it 0.35. Run the optimizer again, and let's not cheat. Let's start from the, the beginning flute and optimize it. And now that hole is 0.34. Uh, let's take a look at the flute, and, and again, our final error is still zero. Um, perfectly tuned flute, all the deviations from our expected frequencies are zero cents. And if we look at that flute, that's a pretty nice looking flute. Um, we'd probably make that flute. Okay. So that's how you create um, whole groupings, optimize for whole groupings, and then kind of tweak them, um, because especially for this very simple scenario with only the small number of, of notes, uh, those, there's an infinite number of solutions um, that fit. The optimizer is just going to pick one that at, down at the 15th decimal place uh, gives you the least deviation. Uh, you might want to tweak it as we did by uh, adjusting the constraints, tightening the constraints for other aspects, and um, away you go. One more thing about um, this two-group constraint set. If we were to, instead of opening a constraint, go to the create default constraints you'll see that it's the same constraint set so uh, that that's the default constraint um, for six hole flutes if you were to bring up um, a different scenario a different number of holes um, it will give you what I'm going to show in the next um, look and so let's get rid of some of these things Let's save that under a, well, we'll not save it, we'll just name it. And we're going to call that um, two groups. And let's get rid of all the other fluff. Actually, let's get rid of all of that stuff. So we just have our starter flute, our tuning, and the two two flutes we just designed. And we'll select our starter again. Um, what if we didn't want to do two whole groups? What if we wanted to try to do uh, what's called the well, we wanted a different grouping. The only way you can create a different grouping is to start from create blank constraints. And the reason for that is that um, the number of whole groups is intimately tied to how many constraint variables, how many parameters the optimizer is uh, going to, to vary as it finds a, a new design. and you just don't edit that very easily by adding and subtracting um, parameters. You need to start from scratch. So we've gone and, and we've clicked 
close that. Uh, we've clicked under constraints and we had a flute selected so it know, knew how many holes we were working with. Create blank constraints. Um, when you do that, the first thing it will come up with is this little dialog that allows you to define um, the whole groups, the whole spacing groups. And you can read the explanation of what we're doing here. Essentially, between each hole, there's a boundary that you can either activate or not activate to define um, whole groups. Any, any number of holes that are between a pair of boundaries are in the same whole group. So our two whole group scenario that we just looked at, that's what its whole grouping would look like. The bottom three holes are surrounded by a pair of separators and the top three holes are surrounded by a pair of separators. If we had no whole groupings, that's equivalent, um, although there's a, an optimizer strategy for it without grouping, of, of having a separator between every single hole. So for this scenario, let's have some fun and let's say all the holes are in the same group. So the only separators, which you cannot delete, are at the ends of, of the flute holes. So you can see all of these holes are, are in the same hole group because the separator is on the outside. So let's say OK. And you can see it's created a, a, a new constraint set um, that will vary the bore length. Uh, the ratio of the top hole from the splitting edge to the total bore length, and one hole group that contains all six holes. Um, and it will also vary the hole diameters. Now you can see that the upper and lower bounds are zero. You're going to have to set those. So let's see if by memory we can come close. So uh, a minimum bore length of 7, and I think it was 27 something. We're not going to come close to that. Um, this ratio, it was 0.25 and 0.5. There's a video for determining that for each fluid. I encourage you to use that. Um, let's set this to a minimum spacing of 0.8 and 1.25 for the maximum spacing. And then for the the hole diameters, uh, let's just make them all a minimum of 0.1. So I'm just using the arrow keys after I enter the number to, to scroll down to the next cell. And let's make the, let's leave it um, wide open, 0.5. Actually, let's not. Let's say, let's just from, from the get-go say we don't want anything bigger than 0.4. Most people can cover a 0.4, and if you have uh, want to make a flute with smaller holes, set it to, to a smaller hole. See what you get. Okay, so now we have created a constraint. Let's name it. We could save it if we want to reuse it. Um, but let's name it to um, one group constraints. Okay. Now we're ready to use that um, to do an optimization run. And we'll start with the same start, um, grouped whole hole position and size, and that constraint set that we just made, and we'll say go. We got a perfect answer. Again, the, the final error is zero. Um, if we look at the spacing between all the holes, you can see they're all 0.98. The hole sizes vary from uh, 0.383 uh, down to 0.278 and let's look at what the flute looks like. So you can actually create a flute um, 
with this small number of, of holes for uh, small number of notes for tuning and this lower flute with equal hole spacing um, and just to confirm that it really was in in perfect tune for those notes um, you can see the deviations are zero but again as we did with the last one we can see that aesthetically um, all of these holes are, are not close to the same size. Now I should comment that every time we're putting these aesthetic constraints in, um, it's only in this simple scenario where we just have the the seven notes that we're tuning, um, that it's, it's a piece of cake to get them all in perfect tune. If you were to do this with a chromatic tuning where you couldn't get all the tunings perfectly on, you would find that when you added these aesthetic constraints, um, whole position groups, playing with the whole sizes, you're likely to affect, to, the, to your detriment, um, the accuracy of, of, the, of the tuning for that design. It may not be much, and you might want to tolerate it, but uh, remember the saying, all flutes are compromises, and as you add constraints or tighten up the constraint definitions, um, you will not get as good a solution. You may not get as, as good a solution. You certainly won't get a better solution. Um, so we were going to, to play with that, um, the constraints for the holes. Let's see what we wanted to do. Um, suppose we were to say that the average um, Let's try it, try it really tight. So let's say the average of these hole sizes, um, let's make it about 0.35 and say we want all the holes to be exactly 0.35. And you can do that. We'll go into this set of constraints that we made and 0.35. So there's nothing preventing us from making the upper and the lower bound the same. Um, we would expect then that the, the resulting uh, solutions would be with that value. Okay. So all the hole diameters are going to be 0.35. All the holes are going to have an equal spacing that'll be somewhere between 0.8 and 1.25. Let's run it on the initial flute starter and see what we get. So first, let's get rid of this guy. And here we go. Now you'll notice with that constraint, that's a very tight constraint that doesn't get to vary the whole size, just the whole positions now, essentially. Um, our error is not zero. Let's see how much we're off. Well, we're off on some of the notes a whole lot. Well, a whole, relatively a whole lot, up to 20 cents. So let's look at what the flute looks like first. And yep, that's all the same hole size, all the same spacing, but let's tweak them a little bit because at least for flutes that I make, this would not be an acceptable flute. Um, let's let the hole size vary just a little bit, enough that we can um, either taper the holes so they're bigger at the bottom or bigger at the top so that um, they look the same size from the top, but acoustically they're, they're different sizes. So um, how much can we do that? Oh, let's make it go from, uh, oh, say three hundredths of an inch either, either side. So we're going to make this um, 0.32 for the lower bound. And we still will probably not get um, perfect tuning. Um, 
but it might be acceptable tuning. So 0.32 on the lower bound and let's make it uh, 0.38 on the upper. And again you can tweak um, what you consider those hole sizes, but at least we want to give the optimizer some chance uh, to vary the hole size to get a better tuning. Okay, so lower bound, all of 0.32. It doesn't mean the holes are going to be the same size, but they're all going to be within this really pretty narrow range. So let's get rid of this guy again. We didn't want to use him. Start with our um, same starter flute. Crank it. And now instead of an error of 1500, we have an error of 1. I'm willing to bet that that's a pretty good tuning. And it is. Um, you can't detect. I can't detect. None of us can detect. None of our tuners can detect uh, that small a variation. And let's look at the at what the flute looks like. So you can see there is some variation in the hole sizes, but you would just um, have this hole wider at the top than the bottom, these holes um, wider at the bottom than the top, and when your finished flute was done, uh, the equivalent hole sizes would be the same as for acoustically, um, but they would look the same size um, from the top. So you can make at least for this limited set of tuning um, and this key of flute, it's an A remember, they're, they're one of the easy ones, um, a flute that's equal hole spacing and apparently the same hole sizes. It's kind of cool. Okay, let's just one quick quick topic. I've only given you ex uh, sample files for flutes that have six holes, and and you could so see my default constraints for the grouping even just had one grouping, three and three. Well, what if you decided, and we're not going to run any any simulations, that you wanted to do five hole flutes? perfectly reasonable. So you, as always, you need to start with an existing sample. These samples are, are useful. Actually, they're necessary. So let's make a five-hole flute. And we do that just by selecting some cell. Um, I'm selecting the top one. And delete selected row. We have a five-hole flute. If we wanted to recalculate, um, you can remember from a previous video, um, let's just refresh it by hitting the View button twice. And that's our five-hole flute. And we don't really care much about the sizes or the spacing. The optimizer will take care of that. But now what if we wanted to uh, create a group constraint set for that? Well, if we... And we whoops. If we select that flute and go into Open Constraints, you can see it knows it's five holes. It selected a folder. Or it's actually made a folder uh, if it didn't exist. But there are no constraint sets in there for five-hole flutes. I didn't provide any. Um, if we go down and create default constraints. Well, I didn't define programmatically those constraints for a five-hole flute either. But if we hit that, it is the same as, well, it's the same as if we had created blank constraints. And let me show you that that's true. So it brings up the whole, whole spacing group definition dialog. And if I were to make um, a five-hole flute, likely I would take the bottom three holes that are played with your lower hand, um, put them in one group, and the top two holes, um, there's only one hole spacing in it, so it doesn't matter if I leave it like this or don't put it in a group. Um, I would tend to do that because that's really what it is, but it doesn't matter for the outcome. 
and say OK. And just like if I had done a blank, it, um, it creates the constraint set with the upper and lower bounds zero. The only difference is um, its default name is default if you push the default button, and it'll be blank if you, you push the blank button. And then you just go ahead and fill out these values um, based upon your design constraints for the user you're going to do, your aesthetic preferences, um, whatever. The program isn't going to crash on you because you um, put some silly values in there. It'll just give you lousy tuning if it's not, not achievable. And I think that's all I want to say about um, whole groups. Um, I use them often because a flute really is a sensual experience. Uh, it's what it sounds like, it's what it looks like, it, it's what it feels like in your hands. And so that whole, whole grouping, that uh, equal spacing, that even spacing, that aesthetic is important in a flute, at least in my mind. So. Um, as in all our other videos, let me reiterate the URLs you might find useful. The release page for the program uh, may be found here. If you have problems with the program, issues, bugs, um, there's the issues page. You will have to sign, sign into GitHub to, to be able to post issues. Not a big deal the video tutorial page that has links to all my YouTube videos um, can be found here and keep looking often I'm not quite done with making videos and the um, the written documentation for using WI Designer can be found here um, with that have a good day